Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about one of my favourite things to do, wood carving. This can be a very simple process using a found stick and whittling with a pocket knife, but I'm going to talk about using a range of woodworking tools to create highly detailed sculptures. Here are some of the tools that I might use to make a carving. Most of these tools are available to use at Vincent's. A vise for clamping the work, an adjustable square, a tin saw, a Japanese style fine saw, a coping saw, a spoke shave, a plane, a battery drill and bits. A leather glove, pocket knife, woodcut print chisels, small carving knives and large gouge chisels and a mallet for larger carvings. Selecting your piece of wood is an important step in the process. You need to consider the grain, density, moisture content and colour of the wood depending on your project. For a small carving you generally want a wood that is a close even grain and is reasonably dense without being too hard to carve. Some native New Zealand woods that I like to use are Tōtara, Matai, Rimu and Kauri. I usually source these from old pieces of furniture or offcuts from joiners making larger items. I have made some preparatory drawings of a crab climbing a shell. It is very helpful to draw to scale, and you need to draw a plan view, which is the top, a side view, and an end view. The next step is to cut your wood down to the rough overall dimensions. Use your template to make sure you have the right width and thickness. I've used my bandsaw to save time, but you can also use a large carpenter saw. For a very small carving such as the Netsuke style I'm making, I'm keeping a length of wood attached so I have something to hold onto or clamp in a vise while I'm working on it. Then draw out your design onto the wood by sticking the template for the plan view onto the wood. I use my adjustable square to make guidelines around the block, then cut out the rough outline line with a handsaw. You can make finer cuts with a coping saw if you want. Then draw the side view onto the wood using your template. This is more challenging as the surface has been cut already. Then cut out the side profile using hand saws. You then need to establish the line around the side, kind of like an equator, which will remain untouched until the very end of the process. Carving wood is a reductive process which means once you carve it away you can't put it back, so you need to be very careful. I sometimes use a different colour pencil to remind myself not to touch these parts. Using your end view drawing as a guide, and again using hand saws, rough out the end view profile. You then start the process of carving the rough overall form. You need to be very aware of the grain direction as you carve. Working with the grain will make the job much easier and avoid tearing the wood. To carve around the outside of an oval form for instance, you need to work in four stages. This can be done with a spoke shave, knife, coping saw, or a small chisel. Once you have the rough form, draw the details of your design onto the wood. Use a different colour pencil to again mark the high points to avoid removing them. The fine details can be carved with small woodcut printing chisels, including a flat blade, a curved gouge, a V-shape, and an angled blade. It is important that these tools are very sharp. Sharpening tools involves a sharpening stone or a piece of fine wet and dry sandpaper and a leather strop with polishing compound. This will need a whole other tutorial to cover the process in more detail. I'm carving this work out of Totoro wood in a Netsuke style. Netsuke are small carved ornaments traditionally made of ivory or boxwood. Worn as part of Japanese traditional dress as a toggle by which an object may be attached to the sash of a kimono.
Throughout the carving process, you will need to redraw some of the details as you get down to the deeper layers of wood. Very fine details can be carved using a rotary tool such as a Dremel if necessary. I only use this tool for the last stages as it creates lots of wood dust and can be difficult to control. Once you are happy with your carving, you can cut it off the length of wood and carefully finish the cut off part. Make sure to use a leather glove to safely hold on to the carving. There are a number of ways to finish the wood, linseed oil, beeswax, danish oil, tongue nut oil. I usually use tongue nut oil and then polish with beeswax mixed with turpentine. I hope you are able to give wood carving a try sometime and enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks for watching.